Here's another A-level last minute tips video for biology paper one. Once again, I just want to make it clear that I'm doing my A-levels at the same time as you guys. So this is more just me telling you guys how I'm doing and what I'm doing for these exams rather than me giving you guys advice in what you should do just because I haven't done the exam myself yet. So I can't really do that. And hopefully we both do us. Well, so let's just get straight into the tips. I think what's most important with biology is the questions. You need to be very, very familiar with those mark schemes. So if you haven't already, go over all the different past papers and and if there's any that you haven't looked at yet, you know the very last questions of all these past papers for paper one are always the exact same thing, specifically for AQA. I don't know about other exam boards, but for AQA, the last question is just a bunch of long mark answers, just testing your knowledge on different areas of a specification. So I want you to compile a list of those and memorize every single mark scheme for those. If you just memorize all of those, you pretty much covered all the different content areas within the specification pretty much. Those last couple marks, right, that last question should be something that you're always getting 15 out of 15 for, or maybe 14 out of 15. You want to bank on those marks every single time. So when you get into the paper tomorrow, this is something that I took from Miss Estrick as well. I personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very last question, fill those in first, and then do the paper at my own pace. And then if I have time, I can come back to that last question, add more things onto it. Because by the time I finish the entire paper, I've probably thought of more stuff that I could add to those points, because you really want to write everything you know, because sometimes the marks can be very, very obscure, such as saying condensation reaction, glycosidic bond, uh, water being released. Like you might have to say really specific things like that to get those final couple marks usually they do allow a lot of different things to get six out of six or five out of five or whatever it is you really want to mention every single possible aspect so you don't leave anything to chance so that's the last question right then you've got the rest of the paper to deal with as well so one thing i'm making sure that i know in and out is the practicals you are definitely going to be asked about those so know them very very well your potato osmosis your cell membrane permeability your microscopes all of those know them very well and do questions on them because the type of questions they give are usually very similar such as like why they macerated the cell tissue for the microscope practical or why they had to keep the potato cylinders the same length for the potato osmosis one stuff like that comes up all the time and it's very common questions or like a graph on it and you have to do whatever interpretation of the graph that stuff very common so I'm going to be going over a lot of that as I can another really easy way to get marks in this paper is there's a lot of evaluate questions whenever they say evaluate you want to give the good sides and the bad sides right so you might get given a table a graph an experiment where it is and you're going to be asked to evaluate the results or maybe a student makes a claim based on the results and you have to evaluate their decision or their claim wherever it is right so whenever you're dealing with those type of questions what I've realized with mark schemes is that the type of things that they say are always very very similar so the good points are quite easy to obtain right you just want to look for trends correlations stuff like that you want to mention the word correlation if you can but then if you're looking at the bad side so the things that might make it unreliable look at whether they've done a stats test if you see no standard deviations anywhere and you see no like p value being used or anything that's a really easy thing to say just simply write no stats test used therefore you can't tell if the differences are significant that's a very very common thing that almost always comes up another really common thing is correlation is not causation right or you can mention specific other factors that could be involved as well that's another thing that you could potentially look at it's also a very common one that comes up also look at the sample size look at the age gender all that different stuff there's a lot of things that come up all the time and are things that you might not necessarily consider but if you've done a question on it before it's a really free marks and it's a really easy to get so just keep that in mind right but if you do see standard deviations you can't say no stats test you have to now look at whether there's an overlap between the standard deviations and use that to determine whether or not the data is significant or not right the differences between the two means if you're doing a t-test if it's significant or not so yeah, that was quite a very specific advice I'd say in terms of more like general advice just I would literally say go back over the past papers that you've done that's what I'm doing I'm going to go back over all the past papers I've done and look at the questions I did wrong and then just memorize the mark schemes for those ones especially for those questions where I knew the answer but I just didn't write it the way they wanted me to or I didn't mention the word complementary or I didn't mention glycosidic bond or something really specific just so if I look over those things I have that in my head so that when I do come into the exam I don't make those same mistakes again that's it so I'm mainly going back over my past papers and seeing what questions I did wrong I'm memorizing mark schemes for those questions I did wrong and on the mark schemes of those last couple questions and I'm going to also be doing a lot of topic based questions now I'm not going to be doing any past paper practice like full two hour past papers instead I'm just going to look at it topic by topic because there's only four topics right topics one to four I'm just going to focus on those specifically and then also focus on practicals individually as well because those are just as important to look at and yeah that's what I'm doing <laughs> I'm saying that like that's that's a small amount that's a lot of stuff but hopefully hopefully the exam goes well best of luck to you guys I hope the exam is decent but remember it's only paper one paper one is usually the easiest out of the three as well because it's topics one to four that's the year one topic so this one should hopefully go smoothly but 
We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Now you need to go and revise as well. I do not want you to be here anymore. Promise me that you're gonna get off YouTube and you're gonna go and revise and you're gonna go and do questions, you're gonna go over your past papers, all that stuff. Make sure you actually do it. Because at the end of the day, the only person that can save your grades is yourself. Good luck guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.